Hello everyone, this is your tutor AB. Today we're going to be solving a problem from the May 2023 IB Physics HL and SL examinations. This is a paper 2 open-ended question from time zone 1. Let's get started. A ball of mass 0. 0.800 kilograms is attached to a spring. The distance to the center of the mass of the ball from the point of support is 95 centimeters. The ball is released from the rest when the string is horizontal. When the string becomes vertical, the ball collides with a block of mass 2.4 kilograms that is at rest on a horizontal surface. Now here they've given us some diagram. Okay, so part A. Just before the collision of the ball with the block, draw a free body diagram for the ball. Now this, all it means is when the ball is basically horizontal, right, at this position right here, they're asking us to draw a free body diagram. So how do we do this? Well, we know on this block, there are two forces acting. We have a tension. This tension is created from this string, a tension, and we have a weight component downwards, right? Weight is nothing but mass into gravity. Now note how my tension is greater than my weight. And the reason for this is if weight were to be greater than tension, this ball would break off from the string and would fall down. So tension has to be greater than weight. And so tension arrow is longer than the weight arrow. And this is the free body diagram. That's two marks right there. Part two, show that the speed of the ball is about 4.3 meters per second. They're saying, right as the ball is hitting this block, what is the speed? Now, to solve this question, we can use the conservation of energy principle, right? energy is neither created nor destroyed it is merely transferred meaning this kinetic energy or potential energy is equal to the potential energy kinetic energy is equal to potential energy so the potential energy at the top when it swings to the bottom is transferred into a kinetic energy at the bottom and using this principle we can solve this question we know that kinetic energy half mv square is equal to mgh right mass and mass will cancel and we know rewriting it v square is equal to 2gh so v the velocity must be equal to the root of 2gh now putting in all the numbers we know 2 times 9.81 times height height we know from before is 0.95 meters we have to convert from centimeters to meters right they've told us right there so putting this on my calculator i'll get v is equal to 4.32 meter per second which is approximately 4.3 meter per second and that's this question done now they're asking us to determine the tension in the string now to do this we need to visualize using our free body diagram. There are two components to this ball. You have the tension and you have the weight, right? We can solve this question using net force. Net force must be equal to the mass into acceleration. Now, what is the net force? Well, we have a tension acting upwards and a weight acting downwards. So we can say the net force is tension minus weight is equal to ma. But not just any MA, it's actually a centripetal acceleration because this ball is connected to almost a radius-like system, right? This is like a circle system. So it's actually a centripetal acceleration, so MAC. Tension is equal to the centripetal acceleration, so centripetal force plus the weight component of the ball. Now, if I were to solve this, I know that MAC is also equal to mv square over r, which is given in your data booklet, plus mg. Now, putting all the re relevant numbers, I know that the mass of the ball is equal to 0.8 kilograms, 0.8 times the velocity we calculated earlier, 4.32 whole square divided by the radius. And the radius is nothing but 0.95, right? That's 0.95 meters plus the mass 0.8 into gravity which is 9.81 now if i put this on my calculator what do i get 
let's see. 0 0.8 times 4.32 the whole square, 0 0.95 plus 0.8 into 9.8. I get the tension comes out to be 23.56 newtons. Now you could round this up to 24, but I'll just keep it right this 23.56 newtons. That's the tension in the string. Okay, now this is a four mark question, part B, so it's obviously going to be a slightly more challenging. After the collision, the ball rebounds and the block moves at speed 2.16 meter per second show that the collision is elastic. Now this is a momentum question. What does it mean when a collision is elastic? When a collision is elastic, it means that the total energy or kinetic energy of a system remains constant. That's what a col elastic collision means, right? The energy before the collision is equal to the energy after the collision. So we need to find out, we need to prove this statement. So how do we do this? First, let's use the conservation of momentum principle to find out what is the ball's rebound speed. I know that the mass final, the momentum final must be equal to the momentum initial. So what is momentum initial is equal to the momentum final right this is in your data booklet so what is the momentum initial we'll you have the momentum of the ball which is the mass of the ball 0.8 times its velocity 4.32 plus the mass of the block 2.4 into its velocity which is actually zero because it's not moving at this point equal to 0.8 again the velocity the mass of the ball times its velocity, which is what I want to calculate. This is its rebound velocity plus 2.4 into the speed of the block. Now, once it's been hit, so that's now 2.16, right? This is just overall how my system reacts to this interaction between the block and the ball. Now, if I solve for V, I get that V is going to be equal to 0.8 into 4.32 minus 2.4 into 2.16 whole thing over 0.8 now let's see if the algebra works out let's put this on our calculator 0.8 times 4.32 minus 2.4 times 2.16 over 0.8 now I get the velocity comes out to be negative 2.16 but actually we want to take the absolute value of this so that's just 2.16. Now we understand that the ball actually rebounds with the same speed as the block. The block moves 2.16 meter per second forwards and the ball moves 2.16 meter per second in the reverse direction, right? So now we've proven that the rebound speed of the ball is 2.16 meter per second. Now using this, let's prove that the energy remains of the system remains the same before and after. Now, kinetic energy final, Ke initial, is equal to Ke final. That's what I want to prove. Now, what is the kinetic energy of the initial? Well, kinetic energy initial is half, this is the kinetic energy of the ball, half, into the mass of the ball, 0.8, into the velocity of the ball as it hits the block which is 4.32 the whole square now that gives me if i put this on my calculator i get the kinetic energy initial of the ball is 7.46 meter per me, uh, joules now what is the kinetic energy final let's just erase this that's the kinetic energy initial. What is the kinetic energy final, right? I'm looking at the system. If the system's energy remains the same, it's an elastic collision. So it becomes half the mass of the ball, which is 0.8 into its rebound speed, which is 2.16 whole square, plus the kinetic energy of the block, half 2.4. Apologies, it's going out of the page. Let me just move it in a little bit. 
that should be okay. Two power four into its rebound speed, which is into its speed, which is moving at two point one six squared. Now, putting this into my calculator now, what do I get? Point four into two point one six the whole square plus one point two into two point one six the whole square. Again, I get the kinetic energy final is also equal to 7.46 joules. Now, what can I say now? The kinetic energy of the system remains the same before and after the collision. Hence, collision elastic. That's how you prove it. To sum up, this was actually a lengthy question. We had to first find the rebound speed of the ball, then using the conservation of energy, kinetic energy final must be equal to kinetic energy initial, I find that the energy remains the same and so it is an elastic collision. That is what is meant by elastic. Okay. Now calculate the maximum height risen by the center of the ball. Now this is similar principle to uh, this question right here. Part 2. Again we just use the conservation of energy principle mgh must be equal to half mv square now of course this v square will now be with our rebound speed of the ball which we calculated earlier right because now it's hitting the block and going backwards so what do i get now i'll find that i'm now solving for height so h is equal to v square over 2g now putting this on my calculator i get that the answer is 2.16 the whole square over 2 times 9.81 I get the height risen is 0.24 meter that's the height risen by the ball and finally part C the coefficient of dynamic friction between the block and the rough surface is 0.4 estimate the distance traveled by the block on the rough surface until it stops hmm how do we solve this problem well what is the formula for friction? Well, we know friction is equal to mu, in this case, dynamic friction, so mu d, the coefficient of dynamic friction, times the normal force. This is the coefficient of friction. Now, they're asking us for what distance does this travel, does this block travel while this friction is the only force acting on the block? It's a resistive force. Now, how exactly can we solve this problem? Well, we could possibly use the equation v square is equal to u square plus 2as. This is one of our SUVAT equations. Now, I know the final velocity is 0 because that's when it stops. Its initial velocity is 2.16 square because that's what it's been hit with. Plus 2 times a times s. Now, s is what I want to solve for. But there's a problem. What's the problem? We don't know a. Or do we? we know that f is equal to ma and in this case the only force acting on this block during its motion is friction so this f is equal to ma is actually just the frictional force so i can just rearrange to solve for a to be a is equal to f over m or in other words f is actually a frictional force so i just put mu d and instead of n, I can say mg because the normal force, since it's horizontal, is just mass into gravity divided by mass. This and this cancel. So acceleration is simply equal to mu d, mu d g. Now we know what is mu d, that's 0.4, and we know what is gravity, that's 9.81. So I get acceleration is equal to 0.4 into 9.81. So I can just put this on my calculator and get a value for acceleration. So I get the acceleration value is 3.924. Of course, let's not deal with signs here. It doesn't really matter, right? Because at the end of the day, it's just, we're just going to understand what direction it's moving in, right? We understand the situation. So plugging that, this number into this equation right there, right here, we get negative 2.16 the whole square divided by 2 into 3.924 is equal to s now actually this is a negative so negative negative cancels s would be a positive displacement so i get 
S comes out to be, putting this on my calculator, Point five nine four meters. Now that's how far the block travels on this rough surface when it's been hit by the ball under this coefficient of dynamic friction. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. If you have any questions, leave it down below and I'll answer it as soon as possible. Thank you.